and if children, then heirs, heirs of God. Romans 7, 17. Not only are they begotten by God as his children, and by a sovereign act of his most free mercy have become the heirs of an inheritance, but subjectively they have made the heirs of himself, heirs of God. Not only are all things in the covenant theirs, but the God of the covenant is theirs. This is the greatest mercy. I am your part and your inheritance, are his words, addressed to all his spiritual Levites. Not only are they put in possession of all that God has, a boundless wealth, but they are in present possession of all that God is, an infinite portion. And what an immense truth is this, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Take out this truth from the covenant of grace. Were it possible, and what remains is the chief wealth and the great glory of that covenant, that God is our God. This it is that gives substance to its blessings and security to its foundation. So long as faith can retain its hold upon the God of the covenant as our God, it can respond with perfect security an expectation of the full bestowment of all the rest. Here lies our vast, infinite, and incomputable wealth. What constitutes the object poverty of an ungodly man? His being without God in the world. Be you, my reader, rich or poor, high or low in this world. Without God, you are undone to all eternity. It is but of trivial moment whether you pass in rags and loneliness or move in ermine and pomp. To the torments of the lost, those torments will be your changeless inheritance. Living and dying without God and without Christ and without hope. But contrast this with the state of the poorest child of God. The universe is not only his, for all things are yours, but the God of the universe is his. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. We have a deathless interest in every perfection of the divine nature. Is it wisdom? It counsels us. Is it power? It shields us. Is it love? It soothes us. Is it mercy? It upholds us. Is it truth? It cleaves to us. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forevermore. What more can we ask than this? If God be ours, we possess the substance and the security of every other blessing. He would bring us to an absolute trust, an absolute God, winning us to an entire relinquishment of all expectation from any other source. He would allure us to his feet with the language of the church breathing from our lips. Behold, we come unto you, for you are the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. It is in the heart of our God to give us the chief and the best. Had there been a greater a better, a sweeter, and more satisfying portion than himself, than that portion had been ours. But since there is not, nor can be, a greater than he, the love, the everlasting, changeless love that he bears to us constrains him to give himself as our God, our portion, our all. And have we not experienced him to be God all self-sufficient? Have we ever found a want or a lack in him? May he not justly challenge us and ask, Have I been a wilderness unto Israel? A land of darkness? Oh no, God is all sufficient. Oh no, God is all sufficient. And no arid wilderness, no dreary land have we experienced him to be. There is in him 
in all sufficiency of love to comfort us, in all sufficiency of strength to uphold us, in all sufficiency of power to protect us, and all sufficiency of good to satisfy us, in all sufficiency of wisdom to guide us, in all sufficiency of glory to reward us, and in all sufficiency of bliss to make us happy here and happy to all eternity. Such is the inheritance to which, as children of God, we are the heirs.